fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. Two men sprawled beneath the hot sun on the broken rock-strewn ground of the open plain. One of these was dead, the other more nearly dead than alive. He could hear the clatter of approaching horses, but he was too weak to lift his gun to fire another shot at those whom he believed to be returning killers. The dying driver of a stagecoach saw the man who wore the mask. He was sure that there would be a sudden shot that would end for all time the racking pain of many wounds. Hold there! Hold, Silver! Hold! Hold, hold, fella, hold! One fellow's still alive. Take a look at the other, Toto. I'll see what I can do for this man. Ah, uh, take a look, steady boy. <clears throat> Stay there, Silver, big fella. Go on. Shoot me again. Get it. Get it done with. I'm not going to shoot you. I'm here to help you. T too late. Here, let me help you. Take a drink of water. Help, Pete. Oh, the fellow dead. He is, Tonto. Mm. I, I'm going fast. Who are you? I'm a friend. I uh, I want to know who shot you. I, I don't. I don't know. I saw the tracks of the stagecoach nearby. Are you the driver? Me. Me. Guard. Other. Uh, Pete. Pete's the driver. Here, yeah, try to swallow some more water. Hello. Uh, can you do anything for the wound? Oh, I see. Much, uh, oh, now take it easy. Tonto's going to put a bandage on your wound. Dirty killers. For the stage. Where's the stage? They drove it away. It's, it's gone. Uh, I'm tired. It's getting dark. Hmm. Let me fix head this way. Yeah. Him rest better. All right, Tonto. Now tell me, have you any idea who did this? What? I said, have you, Tonto? Uh, him gone now. He couldn't tell a thing about this, Tonto. Whoever killed these men? Wait. The most. You look yonder. <laughs> What's that? Riders come this way. Five, six riders. I see them. Get ready, Tonto. We may have to fight them right here. Maybe the outlaw's coming back. Uh, me ready. Hold on, that's the sheriff. You know him? Yes, that's Curly Bedford, the sheriff from Ransville. Uh, him know you? I know, Toto. Oh, that bad, that plenty bad. Maybe him I think you... I see what you mean. Well, you're right. You'll think we did this. You ready for a fast break, Toto? We may have to get away from here in a hurry. Uh, me ready. Stand right here. Don't try to mount. Steady, steady. Get your hands up. Heist them up. 
We got the drop on you. Red, you and Sam take a look at those two and see if they're done for. You didn't take the trouble to examine them, Sheriff Bedford. They're both dead. Oh, they are, huh? Well, I reckon you ought to know. Take the guns, Red, and take the mask off the tall one. Just a minute. And say, how'd you know my name? I've seen you before, Sheriff Bedford. I've been in Ranceville several times. Yeah? Well, where's the stage? I don't know. The rest of your gang made up with it, huh? Well, we'll find a way to loosen up your tongue when we get you to town. Red, I told you to take their guns. I, uh, I wouldn't try it, Red. Hey, look here. We can start shooting if you want us to. Tonto and I had nothing to do with these murders. We came here when we saw vultures circling. Uh, I don't believe a word you're talking about. We found one of these men still living. We found that there was nothing that could be done to help him. I tried to learn from him who shot the guard and driver and robbed the stage. But he couldn't tell me. Uh, you're only wasting your time, mister. We're taking you into Ransville. You can go peaceful or go horizontal, whichever you want. You will uh, let us mount our horses, won't you? Sure, mount up. But let Red take your guns first. Why doesn't he come and take them, then? Dread it. I don't like the way he stands there, Curly. He looks like a man that could drop them hands and jerk his guns in the flash of an eye. Oh, take his guns. How about it? Will you let me? Come in close and try and see what happens. You see, Curly, Dad Reddit, he'll grab me and use me for a shield as sure as I'm alive. Not up, Tonto. Uh-huh. How about it, Curly? Going to shoot me because your deputy won't do what he's told? Steady, fella. <laughs> Steady, boy. Oh, Steady I'll there. take on my own self. Come on, man. That's what I hope. Hey, let me go. Get going, Tonto. Get him out. You men fire and you'll hit your sheriff. Let go or you'll hang. Put me down, I tell you. Come on, Silver. Put the sheriff down. Let him go, do you hear? You'll pay for this. You'll pay, I tell you. Listen to me, sheriff. Listen. Oh, you wait. You jail me. You'll be letting the real killers get away scot-free. I'd kill those men. You think I'd stay there and wait for you to capture me? Hoping you'd be sensible, but you're not. I'll get square for this. I'm going to let you down now. Oh, there, Wolf Silver, Wolf Fella. Oh, you wait. I'll get you again if I have to scour this county with 200 deputies. You can walk back to your men and your horse. When I find the murderers of the stage guard and driver, I'll turn them over to you. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Meanwhile, far off in another direction, six horses, cruelly driven, pulled a bouncing stage across rocky ground where there were no tracks left. Half a dozen men on horses rode alongside the stage. Two men sat upon the seat. All right, Dirk, rain up here. This place is as good as any. Rain up, boys! Oh, you ordinary critters here. Oh, 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 Sure got away with this cargo in neat order, huh, Dirk? Yeah, we sure enough did, Blackie. As far as I know, both the guard and driver was left dead. Mighty close to it. <laughs> Don't matter anyhow. They didn't get a look at our faces. Yeah, I'd hate to ride on that thing all the time. Yeah, me too. <sighs> Give me a good horse and saddle instead of one of them things. Now, come on, you boys. Get the mailbags off the stage. Oh, yeah. Hurry it up and don't stand around waiting for instructions. You know what you're to do. Yeah, it was a sight easier to take the whole stage than to unload it and tote the mail bags on the horses. Even if it was tough riding for a time. Yeah, unhitch the stage horses, Dick. Mm, right. I'll give you a hand while the boys are unloading the mail. We'll set fire to the stage and let her burn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad we can't use these horses. They're good ones. Yep. Yeah, only they ain't saddlebred. We'd have no use for stage pulling horses. Yeah, I reckon we'll just have to leave them go. How about those mail sacks? They're most all off the stage now. Well, cut them open, then. I want to go through the mail. Blackie hurriedly went through the mail, selecting certain letters that looked as though they might hold money. When the last of the sacks was unloaded, his men helped him. Meanwhile, Dirk finished unhitching the horses. Get going. You two get, get along there. Yeah, that takes care of them. How about the mail, Blackie? Well, we'll make enough out of this to make the hold up worthwhile. <laughs> Good. I figured maybe Big Dan will be stringing this along. You know it's better than to try and do that. How many stages have we got to dispose of? He didn't say. He just said that he'd tell us when we'd waylaid enough of them. Oh, doggone. Look at the cash holding money in this letter. It must be close to $500 here. Good. Put it with the rest. And when we're all done, we'll whack up and set fire the rest of the mail when we burn the stagecoach. Uh, Blackie, uh, maybe we could uh, go to Big Daniel and tell him that there wasn't any cash on the stage. Then we could tell him he'd have to pay us if he wants us to keep on with his robbing and wailing. You don't tell Big Daniel things that ain't true, Dirk. Mm -hmm. Big Daniel never got as far as he has by being took in by men like us. 
He's a doggone smart schemer. And if he hadn't wanted to be a lawyer and a banker, well, he could have made a fortune any one of a dozen other ways. Oh, all right. I only suggested it, that's all. Uh, Blackie. Yeah? Just why does Big Daniel want us to do this? I didn't ask him. I don't see what he gets out of it. I don't either. But you can bet your boots he'll get his or he wouldn't have had us do this. <laughs> Blackie, I bet Jim Mosey will be hit hard when he finds that his stage is gone, eh? <laughs> never find the stage. I can tell you that right now, Gail. But, Pa, why are you so sure of that? Oh, it's just a feeling I've got, that's all. I reckon we're licked, honey. Licked and done for. Pa, how can you say such things? You, Jim Mosley. Why, they used to call you Fighting Jim Mosley. <laughs> Fighting Jim. And now, just because you've lost a stage and cargo, you're ready to call quits. Gail, I never did tell you all that was going on. No. Pa, I know that the guard and driver were friends of yours, and you feel mighty bad about having them killed, but, well, they wouldn't have wanted to die any other way. You know that. Old Slim always said he hoped he'd die in harness with his boots on. Gail, you talk up like a brave girl, honey. But when you're fighting the things we're up against, courage don't play no part in winning out. Why? Have you seen that slicker from the East that's been around town since morning? Yes, I... I saw him when I passed the hotel. He's the one. The one? What one? The one we've got to lick. We can't do it because... Well, I, I don't know the rules of the game he's playing. I, I don't understand, Pa. But look, Gail. There he is now. He's coming in here. May I come in? You are in. Close the door. I suppose you want to look at the stage line's office and see if it's the way you'd like to have it when you take it over. When I take it over? Well, you haven't got it yet. So if you don't have any business here, go on back to the hotel. Pa, that's no way to speak. Oh, no way to speak, eh? You're the owner of the stage line? That's me. Jim Mosley. I've heard a lot about you, Mosley. They used to call you Fighting Jim, didn't they? Is that all you come here to say? Pa, now you shush up and let me speak. We don't know who you are, stranger, so maybe you've got the advantage. I'll tell you who he is. He's Mr. Tupping. He wants my stage line. Oh. He's tried all manner of tricks to get it. He started out by making offers through Big Dan over at the bank. You never told me, Pa. I won't sell this line. I built this stage line up from nothing. I built it when the stages ran at a loss. I fought Redskins all along the trail from here to St. Joe. I know you did, Jim. Yeah. And when you found I wouldn't sell out, you told Big Dan to get tough, make threats against me. But I'm not but I'm the glad one. you're here. By Juniper, I am glad you come here. At last we can have the showdown. I hope it come. You want a showdown? The same old fighting Jim I've always heard about. Well, you've taught me a new way to fight. When you couldn't scare or bluff me into selling out, then I suppose you handled things your own self instead of letting Big Dan handle them for you. You hired killers. You sent them out to wreck the stage. Well, that didn't make me sell. So you stole another and shot my friends. Oh, you can't accuse a man like that. Well, I am accusing him. I'm calling you. I heard you. You figured that if you wrecked enough of my stages, I'd go broke and have to sell out. You turned to robbery and murder to get what you wanted. Well, two can play at that game, Tupping. All I wanted was to know the rules. Huh, in the name of goodness, stop. That's gunpowder talk. That's what it's meant to be. But you, you can't want say... the stage line, eh? You'll kill two good men to get it. Well, then try and kill the third man. You got a gun under that coat of yours. I can see the butt end sticking out. Pa, stop. One minute, Mosley. One minute, nothing. You made the rules of the game, Tupping. And the rules say that murder's all a part of it. Well, let's have the showdown here and now. Reach for that shooting iron. It's you or me. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. our story. The owner of a stage line who had suffered loss of stages and death of his friends was livid faced with fury as he shouted at the man dressed in the clothes of an Easterner. You heard me, Mr. Tubbing. Reach for that gun. It's either that or I'll have to shoot you like I would a polecat in my cellar. Now just as soon do it. No, you won't, Jim. 
They'd hang you. <laughs> hang me? What's the difference? Hang me or shoot me? I don't care which it is. I've lived. I've lived to see my stage line amount to something. Hi, you've got to stop and listen. You stand back, girl. But if you don't, I then... can see the stage line taken from me, or I can drill you and know that it'll be rid you of your plane to get it. And if they do hang me, Gail will be able to carry on where I left off. What if I uh, don't draw it, Jim? And I'll shoot you anyway. I'm drawn right now. Just the way you did when you fought with General Custer? I'm shooting anyhow. I'm drawn right now. Uh, what? The way you did when you helped the Texas Rangers clean out those smugglers at the border? And the way you uh, did... Hold on. on. Uh, How would you know about those times? Remember that time that you warned the Texas Rangers about an ambush? You told them about 50 men who were up ahead of them? Yeah. I remember that. And then fought side by side with six rangers and cleaned out the gang. Your wife stood right near you then, Jim. Just as your daughter standing there now. Only she wasn't telling you not to shoot. She was yelling, fight, Jim, fight, Jim. And loading your guns for you as fast as you could empty them. Uh, yeah, I, I remember. You couldn't shoot a man that wouldn't draw his gun to defend himself, Jim. Not you. I, uh, say, who the Sam... Who are you? Ain't your name Tupping? Jim, I'm not from the East. But Big Dan, the lawyer, banker. I want to have a talk with Big Dan. I want to know more about this Easterner named uh, Tupping. You're not Mr. Tupping? I'm from Texas. Oh, Pa, you hear that? He's not from the East. He's from Texas. I was with your old friends just after they'd been shot. I was with one of them when he died. He was? The sheriff wanted to arrest me for the murder. That's why I came here in disguise. Oh. And Jim... Otto found your stagecoach, or what was left of it. They'd burned it. They... They did, eh? I suspected I'd never see it again. You helped the Texas Rangers once, Jim. Now perhaps a man that taught a lot of those Texas Rangers can help you. Let's sit down and have some facts. Big Dan had studied law and owned the bank in Rainsville. The combination made it possible for him to do just about as he pleased and get away with it. So clever was Big Dan in his handling of affairs that no one suspected him of underhanded dealings. In fact, he enjoyed the goodwill of almost everyone. He was sitting in his office when Fighting Jim Mosley walked in. Well, Jim, come and sit. Close the door. Well, thanks, Dan. Have a cigar? No, no thanks. I can't get the knack of burning tobacco instead of chewing it. I came here to have a talk about my stage line. Oh, uh, yes, I heard about your hard luck. Sure is too bad, Jim. I was mighty sorry when the sheriff told me he'd found your garden driver dead. He got it, all right. The sheriff says he had the critter that did it, but he made his escape. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. There was an Indian with him, too. Daniel, do you think there'd be any chance that this man you spoke of would have hired men to wreck the stage? Who? The man you told me about, Mr. Tupping. The one you said had been trying to buy me out. Oh, Tupping. Well, Jim, it's hard to say. Tipping what's your stage land mighty bad. So you said. And you know how it is. He's got lots of cash. When men like that want something, you usually get it. You think he'd go that far? Yeah. I mean, murder? It couldn't be proved, Jim. No, I know from my experience as a lawyer that we can never prove anything against him. Even if you did hire men to make trouble. I savvy. I'm sorry, Jim. Mighty sorry. Well, I suppose the thing to do is to take the advice of a man like you. Your businessman. Your lawyer. Yeah. Hmm? What did you suggest? Well, Jim, as a friend of yours and as a businessman, I suggest you take a fair deal and sell out. What's a fair deal? Well, you know what Mr. Tubbing offered. That wasn't a fair price. Why, the horses alone are worth more than he was willing to pay me. You had some losses since his offer, you know. Maybe you'll have to pay a little less now. Less? Why, Jim, you... I know how you feel. You feel that the business you build up is worth something. But that's just your point of view. It is worth something. It's worth a heap more than chopping offers. Well, of course, if you want me to write him again, I'll do hey, it. But, I uh, thought that strange around the hotel was Mr. Tupping. No, I don't know who he is or salesman of some sort of reckon. Well, look, look here, Dan. You tell Tupping if he wants to make a deal, he's got to come here. Come here? But he's away in the east. I still say he's got to come here if he wants to make a deal. I won't do business with a man I can't see face to face. Jim, business methods have changed since you were a young man. Now well, I ain't changed, and I'm the man that's doing business. You write and tell him I'll sell out, but I've got to see him. He can come here if he wants to take over my stage line. All right, if that's the final word. It is. Each evening, the stranger, dressed as an Easterner, left town and after darkness had fallen, went to a small camp near the town of Rainsville. There he met Tonto and the great horse, Silver. 
That won't be long, Silver, and we'll be riding again. <laughs> Rest makes Silver want to get way, huh? <laughs> Things are shaping up, Tonto. Bite and Jim is willing to help us. Mm, I'm good. The information we had when we started for Ranceville is right. We'll have a trap for the biggest crook in the West. But maybe trap not work. Him plenty slick. If we don't catch him with this trap, Kimosabe, we'll have to find some other way. You're watching things in town? Uh, me watch plenty close. Good. We may have to wait some time. But, Tano, I don't think we will. The crook is too anxious to get control of the stage line. Several days went by. Then as Gail Mosley was passing the bank, Big Dan came to the door and called. Oh, Gail. Gail Mosley. Yes, sir? Step over here, won't you? I've got word for your father. Oh, have you? Yes. Uh, Mr. Tupping has written to me. Oh, He's ready to come out here and talk about buying the stage line from your father. Oh. Now, don't look so, Miss Gale. After all, there'll be cash enough to make you and your father rich, compared to what most folks are. Eh? But Pa didn't want to sell at any price. I understand, but sentiment must have no part in business. No, I... I suppose not. You tell your father to step around when he can, and I'll advise him. I'll tell him. I'm glad you came right away, Jim. Now I can sit in when you confer with Tubbing. Uh, reckon you can, Dan. Unless you'd sooner have someone else. Of course, being your banker as well as your lawyer, I can be in a better position than anyone oh, else. Oh, it don't matter. I reckon all I'll need will be a witness when I sell out the line. You can sign as a witness, same as anyone else. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try and talk Tubbing into paying a little more. Just for the goodwill of the business, you see. All right. Then that's settled, eh? Yep. You'll be with me when he comes here. Good enough. When's he coming? Hey, now, let me see. I'll have to check back on his letter here. Could I have that uh, letter? It's addressed to me. Yeah. He says he'll be here on the 10th of the current month. He's coming on your own stage line. Good. I'll arrange to meet him. 10th of the month, he say. Right. I'll be waiting. On the morning of the 10th, Jim Mosley went to the office of the sheriff. You said that you'd help out if there was a chance of getting the critters that killed the guard and driver. So I will, Jim. No matter what you have to do? No matter what. All right, then, that's settled. I'll call in my friend. Hey, mister, come on in here. Sheriff's ready. Good. Hello, Sheriff. Oh, you're still around, eh? Mister, I've been wondering just what you're here in town for. You'll find out, Sheriff, before the day is over. You and Jim will have to go for a ride with me, and you'll have to wear masks. What? Masks? Now, Sheriff, you promised. All right, then, I promised, and I'll see you through, but what are we going to do? Jim will tell you while I use the back room to change my clothes. I have other clothes here, better for riding. All right, go ahead. Now, what's this about masks, Jim? Well, Sheriff, we got to pose as stage robbers and stop the westbound that's supposed to bring Mr. Tupping here. Hmm, for what? <laughs> Set a crook to catch a crook. Critter that was to change clothes. You ought to be ready by this time. Come on, Sheriff. You! So you're the one. You and the Redskin. Why, I wondered why your voice was familiar. Come with me. Out on the horses are waiting in back of your office. We're going to stop the stage. The westbound, rumbling along at a fast clip, was suddenly overtaken by three masked men. Right up there! Right up your head! Now, wait. Don't shoot us. Don't shoot. We're stopping. Get off that seat. Where are the passengers? Only got one. Get out, stranger. Uh, no, wait. Hold on. Hurry up. Get out of that stage. You, guard, driver, passenger, the three of you line up. Come on, quickly. Uh, hold on. Now, let me speak. We've got our orders. Too bad that we can't let the big boss get into a jam by having survivors tell what we look like. Hold on, you doggone fool. Don't you know who I am? What's it matter? Now, don't drill me. I'm working for the big boss, too. You? You don't even know who he is. Yes, I do. I'm working for Big Daniel, I tell you. You touch me and you wish you didn't. I'm in on things. Hey, take care of the garden driver. What are you doing on the stage if you're working for Big Dan? I got a pose as an Easterner to put through the deal. I suppose you're to wreck this stage so the price will come down. Put through what deal? Ask Dan. You'll convince us that you're working for him or take hot lead. You know the deal. He's going to buy the line. He's got to show a buyer, and I'm riding to Ransfield. The pose is the same. Maybe you're the one that headed that last raid. Yeah, I am. Well, I guess this fellow's to go back to town with us, isn't he? You didn't handle it all alone, did you? Oh, sure not. The rest of the boys are in Amaranthi. I can get them and prove to you who I am. We've got to be sure of you, though. What did you do with the stage the last time? I burned it. 
Took the cash from the mail, then burned the mail, too, the same as you'll do this time. Is that enough? That's enough for me. Take off your mask, Jim. You dirty, ornery, murdering polecat. Jim. Jim Mosley. Get dog on right, and here's my badge. The sheriff. That's all we need. By Juniper, at last, we've got the goods on Big Dan. Let's get going. <laughs> Big Dan, we want you. Hey, Sheriff, what Come is on, it? Blackie. Uh, Here's your polecat killer, Dan. We took him from the stage. Just to make sure, Dan, we look at the letter you said you had for Mr. Tubby. Oh, no, yeah, there, there it is. Get the envelope, Jim. Here it is. Now, let me see the postmark on the envelope. Oh, wait, Sheriff. Let me explain about ah, this. Ah, never yet. mind. This explains everything. This letter was mailed a long time ago. You just faked a letter from Tupping and put it in this envelope from the east. You never thought to check the date on the postmark. Blackie has confessed, Dan. The deputies are getting the rest of his gang over to Amaranthe. And I, I'm going to keep my stage. And Big Dan, you're going to pay for all damages before you go on trial for planning murder. Hey, that masked man, Sheriff, get him back. i got to thank him. And Gail wants to thank him. He's out there in the saddle. Wait! Wait, mister! I'll sing The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.